welcome back. Well, the fourth annual Tietzi Mashinini Memorial Lecture will take place this coming weekend at Morris Isaacson High School in Soweto. That's where Dan went. He's very proud of that. Mashinini was at the forefront of the June 1976 school uprisings. Now, Professor Chilitsi Marwala will be one of the prominent speakers there, and he'll give a speech on the Industrial uh, Revolution. And joining us in studio is the Prof himself to talk to us about the fourth Industrial Revolution and your message, Prof. Good morning. And good thanks morning. for your time this no, morning. Thank you very much for so, invitation. Obviously very relevant, this is what we're talking about, but you, you obviously will be uh, targeting the youth with your message. What is it you want to tell them? This well, uh, I think uh, the first thing that I would like to do is to reflect on the life of Tsietsi Mashinini. He was a pathfinder. He was uh, a person who challenged a very humongous system uh, that was brutal and uh, succeeded in many ways. Mm. So the youth of today do not have to face police uh, shooting at them. They have to be facing the world that is changing very rapidly, that is changing the world of work. That requires a completely different mindset to that which C.H. Machinini uh, required in order to be able to tackle uh, the apartheid system. Mm. Uh, one of the things that uh, we require of our young people is that they have to study very, very hard. They have to be multidisciplinary. They must be able to understand society, uh, people, and technology all at the same time for mm. them to succeed in the fourth industrial revolution. Very, very difficult. They have to read. They have to learn. They have to engage so that they are able to develop all those skills that are needed for them to succeed in the fourth industrial revolution. Well, y you know, like you say, you want to highlight the achievements of the likes of uh, Tsietsi Mashinini and, and, and all those decades ago and mm -hmm. what him and others were able to achieve without the use of technology. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the youth of today, like you say, don't have to look over their shoulder all the time. They're not looking at authority. They have all this information at hand. Mm -hmm. Yet, do we find that they're actually doing justice with what they actually have and what was able to be achieved in 1976 without the tools that they have today? Absolutely. I think uh, the youth of today can actually change the world much more significantly than uh, the youth of the past. Mm -hmm. They are now connected to the globe. Uh, when CSC Machinini was around, there was no internet. Mm. CSC Machinini probably uh, had at his disposal a fraction of the knowledge that uh, our youth of today and the network, actually yeah. have. The network, mm. there was no Facebook, there was no Twitter, you know. We have all those things. Just in addition, especially to the youth of Soweto. Uh, Soweto is going to be the first township, has just become the first township to have fiber internet connectivity, mm. making that connectivity faster, even faster than some of our suburbs. But despite all those gains, uh, we still uh, see in, in Soweto a crisis in education, yeah. uh, stabbings and uh, maladministration in some of the schools. And I think this is the time in which the youth of today must become new forms of activists to make sure that uh, they are able to contribute towards uh, our attainment in the fourth industrial age. Now, Prof, and like you say, that will be achievable if they had their head in the right space. And I'm going to sound like an old person when I say that, if their heads were screwed on properly yeah. at this time. And, and like you say, we were looking at the stories where youth are fighting themselves now, let alone not having to fight authorities or look over your shoulder. They are a threat to themselves. How do they navigate this? Because, you know, how do you even, when, when your person standing next to you is somebody that might be the person who stabs you tomorrow well, morning? Well, obviously, right? we need to come together as uh, as, as organization, the University of Johannesburg is family in Soweto. We have just, uh, 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 um, you know, invested 1.4 billion uh, rands in our campus in Soweto. We have a, a, a world-class primary school, Funda Ujabule, uh, Jabule in Soweto. We have a, a, a huge science center for the benefit of high school students. What the youth have to do mm. is basically to exploit those opportunities. Very, very, very important. Because the youth of today must be different types of, uh, of, of, of activists. For example, when uh, the Google 
maps does not pro pronounce our names well. Mm. It is the youth of today who have to go out there and create companies that are able to pronounce our street names well. Yeah. And for us to be able to achieve that, education is very, very key. Or have a South African to actually <laughs> pronounce those names on Google Maps. <laughs> I demand that we have a South African do it. Now, Prof, for those who hear the term fourth industrial revolution and have this picture of robots and machines and artificial intelligence taking over, it might be a very scary thought of what, whole, what that holds for them in the future. Looking at unemployment, youth unemployment rates that we're seeing at the moment, they might say to you, but uh, Prof Mawala, how are we supposed to be excited about something that threatens to further possibly take away jobs from us as well in future? Well, I don't think uh, we have a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the world in which we live in. We don't have a choice in in the world we live in. There are many other outside forces that influence this. And of course, now we're living in an era where robotics is, is a big issue. What we ought to do instead of sitting down and complaining because it is going to march on. Our historical studies actually show that uh, whoever opposed industrial revolution was put aside and industrial revolutions, whether the first, second, or the third, marched on. Mm -hmm. What w our youth ought to do is to equip themselves to be able to thrive in the fourth industrial revolution. And we know some of the key skills that are needed in the fourth industrial revolution. Critical thinking skills, mm. something that uh, CSC Machinini was quite good mm. at. Mm. You know. Those are the skills that we need. Ability to, to connect with people, uh, ability to use technology. Uh, CAC probably did not use much of, 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 of much it technology, much available at the uh, time, yeah. uh, uh, but certainly all those things are at our disposal. We have the resources to be able, you know, the internet is, is in Soweto, um, our campus is in Soweto. All the youth need to do is to take advantage of those opportunities, not to complain about the fourth industrial revolution, because it is going to come. And they must find their place in they it. They must find the Create a place. space Absolutely. for themselves Absolutely. in it. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Well, it's going to be a fabulous lecture, I think. And if uh, those who are going to be attending will be lucky to hear that message from you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and that's Professor Shlitsi Marwala, who's uh, going to be delivering uh, uh, a, a part of the uh, lecture there at uh, the annual lecture that takes center stage. It's happening at Morris Isaacson High School. And that's where my partner actually went. And we, we know that greatness uh, comes through from their partner. You must be very proud at this point.